National Championship. The Florida Gators have won the Southeastern Conference Championship. Gator Zone is presented by Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Gator Zone alongside Megan Parler, Jeff Cardozo with you. We're hanging out in the F Club where there's a lot of great memories, a lot of awesome moments over the years, and that's what the spring is all about. A lot of uh, awesome moments and really a busy time for us. We're nonstop running around left and right, but hey, it's fun. It's always great to be covering the Gators. Yeah, Jeff, and it seems like the spring is all the sports. <laughs> you Every day someone is playing, there's a double header, there's just so much going sure. on, and the tennis teams now are both in full swing of their SEC play, and Andy Andrade, one of the sophomores on the team, ranked top 40 in doubles in in the fall and he's ready for a great spring season. Yeah, IMG Academy kid from Bradenton and uh, the Gators are lucky to have kept him in state. Sophomore Andy Andrade has come a long way since his freshman season. Andrade moved from Ecuador to train at IMG Academy and was ranked as high as 12 in his class for 2016 before committing to Florida. I also decided in between some schools in Florida but there was actually the an ex-former player here, Diego Hidalgo, he's also from Ecuador, and he got me to look into Coach Shelton and the university. And I took a visit here, and I was like, wow, this might be the fit for me. At the beginning, I wasn't really sure what I was going to expect, you know, and then I was, I was just ready for the whole season to happen, and then it was wonderful, to be honest. It's good to represent something, you know, other than just yourself. I like it a lot, so I'm representing the Gators, uh, Shelton, Tanner Stump, Coach Perlman, other coaches, and my team as well. Just not playing for yourself, like playing for something bigger than yourself. Coach Shelton has brought my confidence up a lot since freshman year, and yeah, I'm very grateful for that. I think my mental game is just playing better. I feel stronger than before than I've ever felt, to be honest, and it's, that's going to play a big role in my tennis. He ended the year winning six of his seven final matches and had a 2-2 record against a nationally ranked opponent. Playing tennis in the U.S. has really changed the game for Andrade. Seeing how seriously players take their game has significantly increased his determination. Back home, I didn't have that many opportunities, so I have to like know what to take care of, you know, and what's important for my priorities. I have to put that first. Growing up in Ecuador just taught me a lot of things. Because of my dad, he, he's a tennis coach. He put a racket in my hand when I was like four years old. And ever since that, I've just fell in love with it. And I just took it serious day by day. And like, it's a different world over there in Ecuador. People here take it serious. And I like that. I think it's something good. I do want to go pro after college. And I never thought I was going to come to college in the US. I mean, that was pretty good for me. Uh, I moved with my whole family, my parents and my brother and uh, we moved to Miami first. We lived there for five years, and then we moved to IMG, which was Bradenton, Florida, and I still have family back home. Like, my mom's side is still there. Though he battles being so far from home, Andrade had a stellar freshman season and continues to improve. His change of confidence has really helped the morale of the team. I mean, he's improved so much. Um, he's always been a very, very good player. I feel like always very talented. But the reason why he haven't been as good as I thought he could be uh, is because he maybe haven't believed as much in himself as he should. But I think he's started to do that a lot more, and you, know, you can see that in this game. You know, he's playing a lot better, and he's going to make a lot of damage for our team this year. I saw him before school, and then get in here now, and it's already been amazing how much he's improved. It's just great to see it that he keeps improving. It seems like almost every semester he gets so much better. He's a pretty down to earth, he's a pretty chill guy and uh, he's just great to talk to. He's always supportive, he always wants to help out the guys and I mean he's always there for us. I'm always telling him, man you gotta believe in yourself, like you have so many qualities, like you can hit like every shot from every position of the court, you know, so it's always nice to have a guy like Andy. As this season comes into play, Andrade has goals for himself and his team. He believes it is going to be a great year and he is excited for what is to come. I think just one of my top goals is just, just to play every match as hard as I can. I just want every player to be confident out there playing every match because I think I, I bring that and I just want them to feel stronger than their opponents. There's 11 guys in the team so I have 10 more goalie guys just competing for spots in the lineup and it just gets tougher. So it makes me think, okay, I have to work harder so I can become a better version of myself. Win or lose, every match counts for me and that's just more motivation towards my tennis and towards working harder. I guess. His hard work and persistence leaves no doubt that Andrade will be an asset to the team for the next few seasons. For Gator Zone, I'm Natalie Morrison.
Well, thanks so much, Natalie and Jeff. I look forward to an amazing spring season. The men's tennis team has already kicked off SEC play with a win, and I'm sure there's more to come. Yes. Well, our uh, next athlete is from France, but attended high school in Guadalupe, and uh, she is uh, awesome, A, eh? one of the, uh, the best out there in all of college sports. You look at the recent top 10 list of triple jumpers in the country, she is seven all time. That's pretty legit. So Giannis David is doing some really good things, and the Gators are lucky to have her. When Giannis David came to UF in 2015, she came with more questions than answers. She moved to Gainesville after living her entire life in Lamenton, Guadalupe. The long and triple jumper's biggest challenge would be off the track entirely. Before her new jump coach, Nick Peterson, and head coach, Mike Holloway, could help her get better at her jumps, she had to understand the language they were speaking first. So I was completely scared, to be honest, and uh, I didn't know what to do. I will be the only one for my family in the United States. I don't have anybody with me. Everybody's going to speak English, and I will be struggling because at that time my English wasn't good at all. Back home, we have English classes and Spanish classes, so I had like the basics, but not like my whole life in English. So, you know, it was pretty bad. <laughs> But you know, now it's, it's way better. She'd give you this look like, what did you just say to me? To now, when you talk to her, her eyes are bright, she understands, she's very quick-witted. So watching her go through that process has been very, very neat. Because she never, was she frustrated? Yes. But she never got angry and wanted to quit. She just kept plugging away and plugging away until now, hey, she's, she's a comedian. In that process, one of David's first steps was befriending fellow jumper Dariel McQueen. McQueen, now graduated and on the track and field staff as a compliance intern, quickly helped Giannis get acclimated to her new life. So when I talked to Coach Peterson when Giannis was on her way to Florida, he was giving me a little bit of information about her. She's from Guadalupe and she's really good. He's been keeping an eye out on her for a few years. So when she finally came, he was like, hey, just help her out. You know, she's a fellow jumper. So I did that. Without her, I think I would have probably been lost, especially my first year. She was always there when I needed her. I knew what she was trying to say, and she knew that I could reiterate that to other people around, especially when she didn't quite have the English language down all the way. At first, McQueen had to help Giannis with even the most trivial of things. She served as the translator between Giannis and their servers at restaurants to help her order the food she wanted. So she, she already knew what I wanted, so she was literally ordering the food for me. She looked at me and she go, like she used her hands to make these facial expressions, and I'm, I would ask her, like, do you like that, or no, or? something similar to it. Going to a restaurant, you take for granted how to order food, but that was something Daryl had to do for Giannis. So it really binded them. They were, they got really close really quickly. And I think it helped Giannis feel at home much quicker than she probably would have. David, for the first time in her career, came in first in the long and triple jump at the SEC championships. With the NCAA indoor championships coming up and all of outdoor season after that, some coaches and athletes would make medals the top priority. But David, as well as her coach, think that improvement matters more than achievement. As long as Giannis puts in the necessary work, they feel that the rest will take care of itself. Giannis and Coach Peterson have specific goals, and those, if, if we reach those goals, then, then we'll get the points wherever we need. But we don't put that kind of pressure on our athlete team. It's not what we do. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on myself, because if I focus on that and then I don't do it, I feel like I let down the team or the people that uh, believe in me. So I maybe focus on improving and we'll see from there. Her initial trek from Guadalupe to Gainesville was 1,603 miles. It takes a connecting flight, seven hours and 43 minutes to complete that journey. Four years, two number one national rankings, and one new language later, the team comedian can finish her Gator career with a lot more to show than just ordering food as another journey will soon come to a close. For Gator Zone, I'm Graham Marsh. Well, thanks so much, Graham, and you know for track and field, Jeff, they never really get a break, so as soon as indoors wraps up, it's time for an outdoor season. Well, we do get a break, so we're going to take it right now and come back with more Gator Zone right after this. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. And by Gatorade. Win from within. Hey everyone and welcome back into Gators. I'm Jeff and I still hanging out in the F Club and Jeff, the gymnastics team, number one recruiting class for Jenny Rowland this year and the freshman class has been insane. And one of those main members, Savannah Shane here. Yeah, and those freshmen were so good. It helped lead the Gators to the regular season SEC title. First time in program's history that has happened. So that was awesome and uh, so is Savannah. 
From the moment she stepped into the gym, Savannah Shanehair felt an instant attraction to the sport of gymnastics. My mom said the first time I ever went to a gym, um, she had to drag me off the beam because I wouldn't leave. And um, I think just ever since I like started it, I just fell in love with it and didn't really want to pursue anything else. That love never stopped growing, and Sav would eventually have her sights set on the elite level until something didn't feel right one day at practice. And we had to do um, like leg lifts and I couldn't even like lift my leg. We ended up going to the doctor and found out that I had a fracture in my L4. So that took me out for seven months. I was in, they molded like a cast to my back. So I was in that for three months and then I did um, a soft brace for another three months and then ended up going back to gym seven months later. So I was completely out for a while. The recovery took longer than expected and Shane Hare couldn't help but question her gymnastics future. I was really nervous that I wasn't going to be able to do gymnastics the way that I wanted to again. That's when I was training elite and all and that kind of like crushed my elite dreams. My dream was always the Olympics, but after I fractured my back for the first time that I just realized that wasn't realistic anymore. So Savannah went back to level 10 training and started shifting her goals to the collegiate level. That's when she met Jenny Rowland. Just like the first visit at Auburn, I fell in love with Jenny and um, she was just great and I was really looking forward to going to Auburn and she was a big reason. Shane Hare committed to Auburn, but shortly after, Roland was named the head coach at the University of Florida. Sav knew she wanted to be coached by Jenny and all it took was one visit to Gainesville. It was just like no other college, just everything that Florida has to offer for their athletes, it didn't compare to any other school and just like the coaching here and just the program as a whole is incredible. I knew from the get-go what a gem she was and that I knew that she'd be able to contribute to this team and she wouldn't take it lightly and she would give it everything she had in order to have success and help the team be successful. That's exactly what Savannah has done in her freshman season. Her hard work has not gone unnoticed as she has consistently been part of the vault and bars lineups. And recently, Sav made her way into the floor lineup as well. Her will, her desire to be the best that she can be really uh, takes her to a different level. Her talent is there, but on top of the talent she is, she's a great worker. She works hard for what she wants and uh, she's gonna go after it 100% in order to uh, get it taken care of. I try my best to focus more on like quality over quantity and that's something that the coaches preach to us all the time is you know get your numbers done so that you can get out of here and you don't have to do more than you need to for your bodies. So that's something that I really try to focus on. Sav has been through a lot in her gymnastics career, but she has now found a sense of belonging as a Florida Gator. It's literally like no other feeling. I honestly couldn't imagine myself anywhere else. I really feel like I'm where I'm supposed to be and I feel like the team and the coaches really have welcomed me and made it feel like home. A broken back may have altered Savannah Shanehair's plans, but she didn't let it break her love for the sport of gymnastics. For Gator Zone, I'm Shelby Grenapp. All right, Shelby, thank you for that. And we kept Shelby busy because uh, she also is in charge of doing all the swimming stuff. And the Gators have a really legit swimmer. The number one recruit in the state of Florida came to Florida. Why not? <laughs> of course. And he is uh, awesome. Robert Fink has done some really good things. We were just talking about gymnastics winning the SEC championship where the men's swimming and diving team brought home their seventh straight SEC championship. And Robert won two individual SEC championships as well. So here's more about Robert. Fink is a name that has appeared on the Florida swimming roster before. Two years ago, Clearwater native Autumn Fink wrapped up her time in orange and blue. And now, her younger brother Robert is coming to the end of his freshman season. In fact, swimming is in the Fink DNA, as their mother swam for Ball State, and Robbie's other sister Summer currently swims for NC State. I really looked up to them a lot. You know, I just looked up to them all the time. My sister is really fast. Yeah, I learned a lot of things from them. The Florida 4A state champion is also a member of the USA Swimming national team. Fink qualified for his first world championships after he took home silver in the 1500 meter freestyle at the 2017 US Nationals. 
He was then the runner-up in the same event at the 2018 U.S. National Championships. It's a lot of fun getting to wear the flag and everything on your cap. It's really grateful for what they've been able to do. Once you get to that level and you train with the, basically the best kids in the U.S. Um, and to get to, to travel with the, with the national team, you're training with the best and usually, uh, as they say, the cream rises to the top and usually uh, kids like you know, Robert enjoy the challenge and they, um, they get better. Fink has certainly been a force to be reckoned with this spring. At his very first Southeastern Conference Championships, Fink finished in first place in the 400 IM. Then on the final day of competition, Robbie once again found himself on top of the podium as SEC champion after a historic swim in the 1653. With his personal best time of 14 minutes, 23.01 seconds, he set the fastest time in UF history, the fourth fastest time in NCAA history, a Southeastern Conference championship record, and broke the Georgia pool record. I'd like to see him race because uh, he's such a special athlete, especially swimming the longer events and the way he swims them. It's just a pride of coaching him, pride of having him on the team and having him perform the way he does. It's, it's definitely awesome to have. You know, he's a very talented kid and I, I just can't wait to see how he grows. Uh, he's only a freshman. He grows throughout the years. Coach Nesty is looking forward to seeing what Fink can do in his rookie performance at the NCAA Championships. And if it's anything like what it was at SEC's, it will be something special. I don't have a crystal ball, but uh, you know, there's potential it's, you know, to think about it. It's, 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 it's crazy, actually, uh, because he's such a determined kid, uh, such a great racer. And you have all those things in an athlete. I'm just looking forward to see him grow and develop, and uh, I'm happy he's a Gator. This in-state standout is quickly making a name for himself as a Florida Gator. One historic swim at a time. For Gator Zone, I'm Shelby Grenat. Well, thanks again so much, Shelby. We appreciate all your hard work, and we look forward to seeing what swimming does to end the season. And we've got a lot more to talk about, and uh, we'll call on the other side here on Gator Zone. Gator Zone is brought to you by Wells Fargo. Together, we'll go far. And by Gatorade. Win from within. Hey guys, welcome back into Gator Zone. Jeff and I are still hanging out here in the F Club. And speaking of all the sports we add in the spring, golf is one of them. And one of the sophomores really wanted to play for J.C. Deacon. And uh, we are lucky that he decided to do that. Kid from down in South Florida went to Gulliver Prep. Chris Nito, already a sophomore, and he is uh, tearing it up. Way better than both her and I, and that's why he's playing for the Gators. Growing up in South Florida, Chris Nito had won a few tournaments as an amateur golfer but he knew that he could be better. So when it came time to decide where he would spend his time on the links at the college level, he didn't have to look far to find the best. The reason I chose Florida is because great coaches, JC's the man, the guy knows a lot about golf, Mark is one of the nicest guys I've ever met. And I um, chose Florida just because great competition, you're around some of the best players and weather's good and it's not too far from home. During his freshman year, Nito tied the lowest round ever posted by a freshman when he recorded a 63 in the third round of the NCAA Regional. Nine under in the NCAA Regional round was the lowest round par by any freshman in program history. That's right, in program history. I've been lucky enough to get to know him uh, really well on a deeper level and uh, he's a competitor. Every, every single thing he does, he wants to be the best and wants to win. And a team needs that. And he brings that element to our team um, that, you know, second place just isn't good enough. It's the drive to be the best and hoist the trophy at the end of the season that makes Nito a perfect fit for this team. Nito knows that there are expectations, expectations for himself and this team. It's those expectations that brought him to Florida. Florida has a really high expectations for every single team. Coach Deacon always says that um, we expect excellence and everything. When Deacon and the rest of the team arrive at the course, they know what to expect from this golfer. He's always wanting more, and that competitive nature goes a long way on rubbing off on our young guys and um, just bringing some confidence to the table. And 
You know, I think all the guys appreciate it. They know he's not afraid of any situation. He wants to compete with the best. He wants to compete on the hardest courses, the best courses, and uh, he's going to bring it. You know, every day he's a hard worker and uh, he hates to lose, and I love being around that. It's, it's really been a pleasure. While Nito brings a competitive nature to the Gators out on the links, it might be his toughness and mental strength that make him irreplaceable. The toughness Chris shows when he plays golf. I mean, after a bad day, he'll be on the range for hours grinding it out till, he, till the sun goes down, basically. Always follows a bad roundup with a good one. While Nito has only been a Gator for a little over a year, Nito has shown glimpses of the type of player he can become for the orange and blue. His mentality, his, his, that's his strength. He's so, so tough to beat mentally. Uh, he just keeps going no matter what, never quits. From South Florida to Gainesville, it's Nito's competitive edge and mental strength to be the best that makes him a great teammate. For Gator Zone, I'm Litsani Carrasquero. So looking forward to seeing Chris not only here, but uh, potentially on the tour someday. That would be sweet. You know what else is sweet? What we get to do after the break? Top Play is one of Jeff's all-time favorite segments right after the break. Well, this guy tore it up against Florida State in the Sugar Bowl. This guy tore it up in Tallahassee with the eye black and running over everybody. And this guy kicked a really long field goal, and he wasn't even the kicker. <laughs> <laughs> they made tons of top plays while they are here at the University of Florida, but we've got more for you. That we do, so let's uh, check out what the student athletes are doing really good around here. Today's top plays are brought to you by Nike. Defensive efficiency numbers. Look at Stokes! Savage finish! <laughs> Letting everybody in the building know it too after it. 47 strikeouts, 3-1. Swing and a high line drive, driven deep to left, and that ball is out of here. Florida gets things moving with a two-run shot over the left field wall from Kendall Lindemann. So it was awesome being here in the F Club, looking at all the great pictures, all the great memories, and way more memories soon to be made here in the spring. But that's going to do it for this episode of Gator Zone. We can always follow your Gators on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat all season long. So make sure you do it and make sure you come out to all the events because the spring is always really busy. So we thank all of you for watching. We thank Gareth Gutierrez for all the great camera work. She's my partner. Megan Parler. I'm Jeff Cardozo. We'll see you guys next time.